Hey guys, so I am super excited. I have two things that I want to talk about today. One is something exciting that's going to be in that space over there once I move all of those spaghetti squash out of the way. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And the other one is I wanted to give an update on my Charente's melon that I am growing downstairs in the basement. So let's take a look. Hey darling and welcome back to my channel. I am Kiri Martin and I am just a city girl who wishes she was a country girl who is currently living in the burbs. I'm a micro homesteader and I grow food indoors year round. I do lots of DIYs and share a recipe or two. So if that seems like something you'd be interested in, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when I post new videos. So anyways, let's get down to it. So. If you've been around here for a little bit, then you know um, that I grow hydroponically um, during mostly during the winter, but also I keep it kind of going in the summer. Mostly it just gets really dirty. So I actually did a video on how to clean it. I will put a link up there to the cleaning video. I have a love hate relationship with my arrow garden. I love that I can grow indoors with it and that it extends my growing season because in Ontario, I'm in zone 5B and it's already cold. We've already had our first frost and anything I was holding out hope for outside other than the carrots and a few other things that can withstand it. Um, yeah, they're dead, they're done. Um, so we won't talk about those tomatoes that I meant to bring in and I didn't, but that is a video for another day. Um, so I do love that I have it and that I can grow um, food during the winter. Um, not a lot. I mean, it's, it's not going to give me that much, but I can grow a couple of lettuces. I have a pepper plant down there. I have some herbs um, and the melons. So that was one of those um, experiments that I wanted to do just to see what was possible. Um, it's going very well, perhaps a little bit too well, so I will take you guys downstairs in a second and we will go look at the fiasco that's going on down there. Um, but I, there's things I don't like about the Arrow Garden. So I will go into that a little bit more about all the things that I find I struggle with um, when I uh, do um, a comparison video with this new company that I have found that I'm very excited about because they, from everything that I can see, they've hit all of those pain points that I had um, and I am actually getting, so anyways, I should tell you what the company is. So the company is Rise Gardens and I am actually getting one of their new personal Rise Gardens, which is going to go right there. And uh, it's a very small model. So I'm gonna do a whole unboxing video and I will probably link that up there. Um, in a bit because I don't have it yet, but when I do, I will put the link in. Um, so I'm pretty excited to get that to try it out and to see um, that it is as good as I'm hoping it is. And then uh, all being well with that, I plan to get one of their bigger models, which I'm going to put in my front hallway, um, which I am so incredibly excited about. I will put a link down in the description to their site. I will also put a link in the description below to some of my other um, arrow garden posts that I've done on the blog, um, things like if you're just getting started with an arrow garden, because I mean arrow gardens are good for certain things and they're good if you're just getting started. Um, for me, I'm just getting frustrated. I've kind of gone beyond that, um, which the Rise Garden has kind of taken it a step further, but arrow gardens are still great, so I don't want to make it seem like I don't like them, um, because I do. I just think there are certain things that Rise Garden has really invested a lot of time in um, and they've they've hit those things that I was frustrated with and they've already come up with solutions so that's exciting. So I will put a link down below to my blog post on Arrow Garden Tips for Beginners um, as well as 14 things you can go in an Arrow Garden um, and a few that you can't though the can list seems to be getting longer with my new experiments so I'll be updating that post as well. Um, and a couple of other posts that are about the hydroponic gardening. Um, so hopefully that will be helpful for you guys. And now I think it's time that we go downstairs and take a look. It's a fiasco. So let's go. Okay, so it's kind of noisy. So I apologize for the noise because the furnace is like right next to me, right there. Um, and so this is my arrow garden. I've got a couple of plants um, in front here 
um, that are, you know, trying to, to benefit from the light. I also have down here still my basil and also my little tomato from the uh, Arrow Garden transplanting video, which I will put a link up above for that. Um, so they're still going strong and that's been a little while. But, um, so before we get into the melons, I'll just give an update of what we have over here. So I have some basil, um, I have a pepper in the back, there's some lettuce and some more basil here. And then over here, we have my Charente's melons. So there are so many flowers on here. Um, I was actually down this morning um, doing some hand pollination. So I just have, just take it down here, a little paintbrush that I use. And um, I'll go in and get if I can zoom in on there. Gently touch inside with the paintbrush and then go around to all of the other flowers, which I can't reach right now. Um, and then I'll go into the different, oh, here we go. So I'll just put the, the paintbrush in there very gently, and then I'll go find another flower and do the same thing. And then I'll just go around to all the flowers. Um, I've done an, another post outside in the garden about hand pollinating squash, um, but same for melons and cucumbers and, and anything like that. It can take up to 12 visits from a pollinator um, in order for fruit to form. And we don't have any bees in here, so this one's all up to me. Um, these are not things that are self-pollinating. So things like the peppers and the tomatoes are self-pollinating, so you do not uh, need to worry about that. Now, Arrow Garden does like to sell this thing for pollinating. Let's see if I can turn it on here. So it's got a little bee in it, it does that. But you don't need it, so don't buy it. Obviously I did, and then I learned more, and I'm telling you to save your money. So, for this I'm going to go around every single day, multiple times a day, um, and try and pollinate as many of these as I can. So, because this is like a squash or a melon, um, there's going to be female flowers and there's going to be male flowers. So, the male flowers tend to be on a longer stem, and the female flowers, you will see um, a little melon beneath them. Um, I will can't seem to see any specific ones right now. This is my first time with these melons, so I do not know it as well. Um, though I must say, they are doing a uh, hundred times better inside the, the hydroponic environment than they did outside in the garden this year. Um, but so I'm pretty excited. So I will probably be doing another update on these as soon as I can actually hopefully get a melon. They're also trying to get over there behind the water heater, so I'm going to have to wrangle those guys in a bit um but yeah so that is my foray into growing charentaise melons or as i call them fancy french melons indoors hydroponically um i will also put a link below in the description to my blog post on the charentaise melons they have a great history um but i'm gonna go upstairs away from the basement which I always feel like I'm going to be attacked by a centipede down here. Um, so we'll go upstairs and we'll finish talking about these melons because they're actually pretty cool. Okay, so I'm back upstairs. Bacon's decided to come join me. Um, so Sharon Tay's melons. They are actually uh, cantaloupe and they have been around for... Bacon, you can't do that. Okay. Bacon's trying to steal the show. I'm going to put her down there. <laughs> So the Sharon So this was actually my first year. I mentioned it when we were downstairs, but I don't know how noisy it is off to see when I listen to the footage. But um, it was my first year growing the Sharon Taste melons. I only managed to get one, and uh, they're not very big. They're kind of like softball size, um, and it was good. Like it was a really good cantaloupe. It made me want to uh, to grow them again. They're very 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 sweet. Um, you can actually smell them and that's one of the things when you can tell that they're ripe you can go out and you can actually smell them on the air and i was like i read this and i was like are you sure like really and then the one day i went outside and i was like i can smell it like oh my god it was so cool um the other thing that's kind of nice about the sharon taste melons um is typically with a melon when it gets ripe it will actually drop off and it can fall to the ground and then uh, break which can be more of an issue especially if you're growing um vertically 
Um, but with the Charentes melons, they do not do that. They will stay on the vine. So you have to watch for them and make sure that they're ripe. Um, you can check that there's usually a, a tendril that um, is closest to them will shrivel up and that can indicate that they're ripe. Um, and they also tend to split. Um, so that's another reason you have to keep a close eye on them because especially if you're growing them outside, um, that because they're so sweet, it's going to attract the bugs, specifically ants. So you have to get them before the bugs do. So growing vertically is something that I want to do. I'm hoping to get some cattle panels and make some arches in between um, my raised beds. And uh, one of the first things I'm gonna definitely be planting on those vertical um, arches is going to be some of these melons. Um, I think it's just a great way to be able to get to them, especially if you want help and do the, the pollination when they're in the arch and the weight of the fruits is gonna make them hang down so you can see where everything is. You're not going to lose it. Um, I actually ended up, um, I didn't think I had any of the Sharon taste melons but then when I was looking at the beans the beans had kind of gone I had it up on two bamboo stakes and then they are two or three and then they kind of ended up coming together in, into like a teepee formation um, and one of the melons actually grew like inside kind of protected by all the beans um, which was good because I was terrified that some raccoon or something was going to come along and steal my one melon um, in full disclosure, I probably picked it a day or two early, um, but I was just so worried that something else was going to get it before I had a chance to try it. Um, so anyways, it was still delicious. It was great. I love the size because it's just tiny. It's not as big as a regular cantaloupe. Um, this is kind of like personal sized, though I did share it with the boys. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really think it's a great, uh, I really think it's a great melon to grow and uh, I'm going to keep growing it for years. It's actually the first cantaloupe I've ever got one to grow. Um, I've tried, I, mean, I haven't tried it all that hard, but I've tried uh, a few times and uh, never managed to get one until um, I switched to this one and then I was able to get one this year. So thank you for joining me today. Um, and putting up with my excitement. I am really am so, so ecstatic um, and can't wait to get my hands on uh, my rice garden. And just remember, homesteading is a spectrum. It's a journey and it's not a destination. So until next time, make food grow.